Okay, so back in 2021, I pre-ordered a few rolls of Lomography's Lomochrome Turquoise in both 35mm and 120mm format film versions. And after a year, I finally got my hands on them and shot a few rolls. So let's chat about what I think about them, shall we? Anyways, hello everyone, it's Bon and welcome to my little space online where I talk about my visual arts shenanigans. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and let's just hang out and talk about all things film photography related. Or whatever. Alright, so first things first, what is Lomochrome Turquoise? Well, it's a color negative film, but unlike your regular film stocks, Lomochrome Turquoise is blue and red shifted, so it yields some very trippy psychedelic photos. As you can see from these photos that I took with it, it has a prominent turquoise or teal look with warm colors switched to teals and cool colors switched to oranges. Now, if you're wondering why anybody would want to take photos this way... Just... Stop it! Get some help! I don't know. Maybe just let people shoot whatever they feel like shooting. Just saying. Seriously speaking though, I think there's a special place for non-conventional film stuff such as this one. It's a fun film to shoot with and I find that it makes you get out of your comfort zone, which I think all of us could benefit from. Anyways, there's definitely a demand for this film because back when I started film photography in 2018, this film was already out of production and I never thought I'd get to shoot it, ever. But alas, Lomography was able to bring it back from the dead with a new 2021 emulsion, which I'm grateful for because having more film stocks to shoot with is good for the film community. And I just love seeing what others like Ryman Pembroke and Dave, the old camera guy, have done with this film so far. But yeah, what have I done with it? Well, back in late October, I joined a Loma Walk organized by the Toronto Analog Friends with support from Choose Film Camera Shop and our friends at Lomography. Lomography had us featured, by the way. Links in the description down below. My photos are there. <laughs> Shameless plug. Okay, so that day, I decided to load a roll of Lomochrome Turquoise on my medium format Key of 60 paired with a Volna 80mm 2.8 lens. And here are some of the shots that I took. Shout out to these lovely folks from the Toronto Analog Friends group for posing for me. So yeah, as you can see from these photos, you can get some pretty interesting portraits with this film. Also, as the light got softer around sunset, the surreal effects of the film on skin tones got a bit less pronounced, which I thought is quite interesting. Granted, I wish I was a bit more adventurous when taking these portraits rather than just being basic as fuck, because I think this film really has potential for more avant-garde style of portraits, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it's gonna turn your model's skin tone blue, might as well make that part of the story and not simply a quirk. But I shouldn't be too hard on myself. Not every photo has to be overproduced and I really enjoyed the time just casually chatting with these folks instead of being all conscious about taking the best photos during the photo op. <laughs> Speaking of which, if you have the chance, you should definitely join a group photo walk in your area. I'm pretty introverted, so this was my first time joining a photo walk here in Toronto, and this Loma walk with the Toronto Analog Friends was just so chill, and all of the people that I met there were nothing short of fabulous. The group was also very diverse with people coming from different backgrounds, genders, ethnicities, etc. All mingling together with our shared love of film photography. I think that was actually the best view that I had in that photo walk. Carmen, who's behind the Undefined Photographer channel here in YouTube, made a short video of that Loma Walk in Super 8, which I will link somewhere up here, somewhere, and also in the description down below. So please check it out if you have the chance. Okay, back to the topic. Aside from taking portraits using Lomochrome Turquoise, I also shot some street photography using this film. One time I was shooting in a very overcast condition, so I decided to shoot the film at ISO 400 and pushed it one stop during development. As you can see from this selection of photos, that led to a bit more contrast in grain and less orange colors, 
I find that this made the photos look a bit grittier, and while this isn't my usual style, I think the effect looked good on these city life photos. I think it gave it that grungy urban look. I also really wanted to shoot this film during sunny conditions, um, when I think this effect will really shine. <laughs> so I took it for a walk around the University of Toronto's downtown campus during the last few days of fall. Photography says you can shoot this film anywhere between ISO 100 and 400, and given my previous experience with this film's cousin, Lomochrome Purple, I shot all of these at ISO 200. That said, I definitely overexposed some of these shots because I was using my Contax S2, which has a spot meter, and I guess I just didn't think about that when I metered for the shadows when exposing high contrast scenes. Typically, if you have a spot meter, you should check the shadows and the highlights, then find an in-between reading to use. Now, I don't want to be too technical about this, but I really wish I just shot all of these at ISO 400 because that would have accounted for the overexposure. I'd say this film stock looks best when shot at 400. I really like the photos with the orange sky because of the teal and orange complementary color palette going on. So I think I'll use this film more when it's sunny with blue skies outside. But yeah, overall I enjoyed getting out of my comfort zone when using this film and the results that I got were quite nice and surprising, I'd say. Anyways, what do you think? Are you gonna try this film? I think you should. And if you're worried that you won't like the results, you can always turn it black and white or recover your true colors by switching the red and blue channels of your images in post-processing. Blasphemy, I know. I know, I've committed blasphemy. Please don't burn me at the stake, but do what you must with that forbidden knowledge. I'll see you all again next time. Cheers.